We've now created all our forests and we're ready to render. But before we do that, let's add a little variation using forest color and tints, and also optimize our materials for faster rendering times. So to start with, let's turn all the forests back on so we can see what's going on. And to illustrate this, I'll just pull in a couple of the materials from the trees and the planks. So forest trees, I'm gonna open the material editor, and actually I've already got them here. But these were dragged in from the tree tool, the birch, uh, by dragging the material in as an instance into the material editor. And doing the same thing as well for the fence, which I'll do in a second. So with that there, if I come down to material, click on optimize materials. This will bring up some settings. So first you choose your render engine and what will happen with this is it will automatically convert any standard materials in the scene to V-Ray materials or mental ray architecture design materials. It will automatically apply forest color to diffuse maps. So this bitmap here should end up plugged into a, diffuse, uh, a forest color. Uh, but it will exclude any materials using these names, which is trunk and bark or anything you, you put in there separated by space. So for example, uh, one of these won't work, it's called bark, so you shouldn't end up with a diffuse material, uh, forest color material on that. And then finally, disable filtering for opacity maps. Uh, that should be turned on if you're using any materials which use opacity. So for the leaves, for example, or in the case of this scene, the hedges use uh, pasty maps for the leaves and the flowers. So you would turn that on in this case. So hit optimize. It's warning that it's going to change the materials in the scene, so you can hit yes. And you saw it update here. So if we zoom in a little bit and see what's happened. It's added a forest color map here. And plug that bitmap into the default map and then put that into diffuse. Notice it hasn't done it for the bark because it was um, one of the names in the exclude list and this one too because it's also called bark so it's basically added that in between let's also look at that same idea on the fence so in material editor I'll just put it up here that texture in an instance and let's optimize that optimize materials all the default settings hit optimize yes and you get a forest color plugged into the diffuse slot great so that's the first thing now let's click on the bush and what we'll do first of all is add a basic tint uh, using the material rollout in the forest object itself so we've got the bushes here now in order for the tint to work um, the object needs to have forest colors applied so we'll need to optimize this Hit optimize yes and close So, without even going into the material settings, we can add some variety from the material rollout. And basically what it does is it picks a color from this gradient and uh, overlays it onto the existing maps using color mode. Um, the random strength, uh, which is zero to zero, which essentially means it's turned off, will govern how strong this effect is. And so it may be worth turning this up to say 60%. That activates the effect. The colors as they stand are quite good actually, but I'm going to make mine somewhat more green. Uh, so I'm going to pick something greener and quite not happen there. Let's try that again. Okay, he's got green on one side. I do want a yellower green on the other. So 
something like that. Let's set that to 70. So this will automatically apply a tint effect. Another way of applying some variety in your renders is to actually create a series of different maps and then use forest color to sort of randomize the distribution of them, the application of them. So we can do this with the, um, the planks, which at the moment all have one texture on them. It doesn't look terribly convincing when it's rendered. And since we've already optimized this and we've got the forest color on here, it's a simple case of applying some bitmaps to these different slots. So let's do that and let's open up some bitmaps. So in the files you downloaded, there should be a maps folder. There it is. Um, and in there, there are some plank bitmaps. So uh, simply, the simplest way of getting these in is just to drag them into the material editor. I think plank three is already in there actually. I'm pretty sure that's plank three. Plank four, five, six, and seven. Should be seven maps in total. Let's close that down. Right. So forest color is very easy to use. All we do is connect these up to the empty slots. This first slot here is for a tint map, um, which goes in here. So we can avoid that one and just keep going down. Map zero, map one, map two, map three, four, five. And then this one will duplicate into map six. Now the probability of each of these maps can be set from here and you need to turn them on as well. So let's just go and tick all these on. And then when you render this now you'll get a random shuffling, a random selection of these different maps on the on the object. And I've already done a render just to illustrate that. So here you can see on the top the fence with the original material on it which had just the darker the, the uh, planks three or wood three or whatever whatever it's called and then the bottom we have the new forest color with the seven different maps being randomly selected and you can uh, you can see the variety that that's added and the final section we're going to look at uh, a, a sort of hybrid of those two techniques whereby we can use a, a shuffle of maps different map types and also a tint which uh, pulls its color in from a map as well. So we'll do this on the birch tree, uh, which is already in the material editor actually, so I don't need to pick that. Let's just delete that. And we're going to just affect the leaf texture using this forest color that, that's here. Uh, we've already got a bitmap here with a leaf on it, so we're going to bring in some other leaf textures to use. So going back to our maps folder, uh, we're looking for leaf birch, leaf birch color one, color two, and color three. So let's take color one, color two, and color three, and drag those in. In fact, I think I'll only do this one at a time. Yeah. So that was color one. Let's take color two and color three. Now just as before each of these can be plugged into a map slot. And oops. And don't forget to duplicate this one. This leaf colour is a bit extreme and I'm not going to want to see that crop up too regularly, so I'm going to turn the pro probability of that down to about twenty percent. So 
we have a number of settings in here for controlling the way this applies to the object and by default and in the light version it gets the ID from the item which means that it applies this leaf once to each object distributed in forest pack in this case each tree would have all the same colored leaf on them you can however switch to element in which case each leaf of each tree would have a randomly allocated texture um, so, so this is gives you an awful lot of control and can create real realism. I'm going to leave it on item because that's what we can use in light, um, but just be aware that it's there. I'm also going to add a tint override as well, but instead of doing it by gradient, we're going to get the color from a map. Uh, so let's pull in another map, and somewhere in here it will say tint map. Let's bring that into. and that plugs into this second map slot up here. Turn on get color from map and leave it on random values which basically means it will pick a random pixel from this map as its tint uh, to use as its tint color. I'm going to set the random strength to 0 and the upper limit to about 40% since the colors on this are quite strong. And, uh, and that's it. That, that gives us the randomized maps on this plus a tint using a map. So all that leaves, remains now really is to render it and, uh, and see what you get. So let's go to custom camera view. Everything is there. Um, put save frames on so we can see what you can see. And hit render. And, um, and I'll pause this now and come back with the final render. So here we have a final render. Uh, you can see some subtle tint effects on the trees and on the hedges and the uh, fence on the left hand side. Uh, so that's working pretty well. Um, so I've put this in Photoshop and just done a quick desaturation and, um, and kind of bleach bypass effect on it. Um, but pretty much unchanged apart from that. Uh, so I've hoped this series of tutorials has been helpful and that it's introduced some of the new features of Forest Pack Pro.